I've covered quite a few audio-related topics in Game Maker on the channel in recent days. I've covered basic audio playback, I've covered some more advanced effects such as audio emitters, audio effects, positional audio, and at least for the time being, there is one more audio-related subject that I would like to go over. And this is definitely one of the more obscure features in the entire engine, if not the most obscure feature in the entire Game Maker engine. Like, if you're making one of those iceberg meme chart things, then this would be way the heck down at the bottom. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about audio sync groups. That's sync as in synchronization, that's not sync as in like you hit the iceberg and never mind. Right, whatever. So, if you've ever wanted to make something like an adaptive soundtrack for your game, then audio sync groups are where you want to start looking. So, examples from other games that I can think of off the top of my head in Super Mario World, when Mario is riding around on Yoshi, uh, you have some bongo drums added to the background music. In other games, it's common to do things like when the player is swimming around in water to change the instrumentation to something more like, um, I don't know, like some nice peaceful strings instruments or woodwinds versus whatever the music usually sounds like when they're walking around on dry land. I always do remember fondly in Pokemon Black and White, you can talk to certain NPCs in certain towns and they'll add different instruments to the, uh, to the background music. So if you've ever wanted to do anything like that in Game Maker, then you're going to want to know how audio sync groups work. So if you want to make use of this, you're going to need to do some initial setup before you even touch the IDE, and I don't mean setup like go into your sound properties and change some sound properties, I mean uh, the audio itself that you're going to want to work with, instead of having a single uh, background music track, you're going to want to have the, uh, the song broken up into different files for each instrument, also known as stems in, um, in the world of sound design. And that can be a bit of a problem if you're like me or if you're like a lot of other indie developers and you get a lot of your music that you use in your game from various uh, like game asset marketplaces where uh, they might not necessarily have the, um, the music separated into stems like that for you. Although if you're working with an actual musician, then you can generally ask nicely and they'll, uh, they'll do it for you. Anyway, so the... Um, the song that I'm going to be using for this demo is going to be this. Uh, this is going to be the complete track with all the instruments. Alright, nice. Uh, by the way, this is uh, one of the aforementioned bits of uh, music that I got off a game dev marketplace. And uh, quite conveniently, it is separated into stems for me. Um, I do not have permission to, like, throw this project on GitHub because, you know, this is a paid asset, but if you want to, uh, to go to the store page and, and get this yourself, it's this. It's, um, by Albert Fernandez on the Game Dev Marketplace. I'm not earning a commission for that or anything. I really wish I was, but if you want a link to that page, I will have it down in the video description all the same. Anyway, the individual instrument stems for the song sound like this. All right, I believe that's a harp. Uh, there's also, we have some woodwinds. I believe that's an oboe. Not good with musical instruments. I think that's an oboe. Violins. Uh, there's six in total. So I'm going to take these six individual um, instrument stems and load them into Game Maker. And I'm actually gonna like put those in, uh, in their own folder so that I can keep track of them a little more easily. And, um, Let's see, I'm also going to want to uh, to name these appropriately. Let's call it BGM. And lastly, because I did just import six um, separate pieces of, uh, of background music into the game, I'm going to want to make sure that in the uh, the sound settings, there, um, the attributes are all set to compressed, because if they're not, uh, those are going to inflate the size of the, uh, of the game files quite a bit, and they'll take up quite a bit of space in RAM when they're loaded. Okay, they now have somewhat saner names. So firstly, uh, I'm going to need to create an audio sync group, and this is uh, something I'm going to do in the player's create event, or if you're doing this in your own game, you might put it in like the game, like something game start event. Um, I can do that by calling the audio create sync group function. Uh, this is going to take a single argument, true or false, whether or not you want this whole thing to loop. I'm gonna set that to true because I do. Uh, this is going to return a uh, reference to a new audio sync group, so I'm going to want to uh, save that to a variable. I'm going to call that BGM group. 
And now we want to start adding individual songs to this, uh, to this BGM group. So I can say audio play in sync group. Uh, it's going to take the sync group ID, which is the one I just created. And it's going to take the, uh, the reference to the sound that I want to include, which is going to be BGM stem one percussion. And I'm going to want to do this to all six of the, uh, the sounds that I just added. So uh, sound two strings, woodwinds, violin, not violins, which is what it sounds like when I say this half the time, and chromatic percussion. So if you just do this, uh, we have prepared an audio sync group. It won't play automatically or anything like that. Uh, despite the function being called audio play, uh, it's not actually going to play anything until I tell it to play. I'm not going to run the game now, but if you did, you adjust your silence. Um, to actually play this, we can say audio play sync. Okay, fine. Is audio sync group play? It is. Oh, for the love of God. Audio start sync group. Like, there's a lot of game maker functions which are a little bit inconsistent in the way they're named, but, uh, sync groups definitely feel like one of the worst offenders. Like, it really should be audio sync group start or... Uh, caps lock start or audio sync group add or something like that for these, but uh, for whatever reason it's not. Anyway, this will cause all of the sounds in the sync group to play, uh, and if I, uh, if I play this, they'll all play at the same time, and it will sound like the complete song. This may take a minute to build because it has to build all the, uh, the background music tracks for the first time. Okay, very nice. So this on its own isn't the most interesting. Uh, we're basically playing one track for the price of six at the moment, which isn't the greatest deal. But if you were to say audio sound gain, and if you were to set the, uh, the volume of, uh, I'm gonna try and, uh, let's say mute what I think is the loudest track in this, uh, this entire collection, which would be the strings. And um, I think violins are also uh, fairly loud. Um, I want the effect to be immediately noticeable. I don't want it to be just like the, the subtle lack of an instrument in the background. Okay, if I were to run this... That sounds very different. So we're now playing without the harp and we're playing without the, uh, the violins in the background. And this creates a much different effect um, than the, uh, the main song does. Um, it definitely sounds different. Uh, the player would notice the difference. And... Where this gets even cooler is you can um, not only change the uh, the volume of these instruments on the uh, like in the create event when you initialize a sync group before you start playing, but you can you can do this at any time. So I'm going to take a super basic example, and if the player is on one side of the screen or on one side of the room, I'm going to have some instruments play, and if the player is on the other side of the room, I'm going to have other instruments play. So in the uh, the player step event, I can just say if x is less than room width divided by 2. We're going to uh, have some of these instruments play, and if, if else, we're going to have some other instruments play. So if you're on the left side of the room, let's have the, uh, how about strings and woodwinds playing? And if you're on the, on the right side of the room, I'm going to have the violin and the brass playing. And that should sound quite cool. All right, you hear the difference. Interesting. So that's a bit of an abrupt transition. By the way, uh, if I uh, want to have just some instruments playing and not others, when I do this, I will want to uh, set the volume of the tracks that I don't want to zero. Just uh, don't forget to do that. Anyway, that's a bit of an abrupt transition. So let's say that instead of having a, a hard cutoff when I enter a new area, I want a crossfade of the instruments over, let's say, the duration of a second, which is going to be um, 1,000 milliseconds. So if I set the time of, uh, of audio sound gain for each of these to 1,000, hey. then we're going to have a, uh, a smooth transition. All right, much nicer, right?
Interesting, right? So that's audio sync groups. Uh, as you can probably imagine, they also come with a handful of other functions such as audio sync group um, is playing, is paused, uh, audio pause, audio uh, pause sync group, uh, audio stop sync group, and um, the usual audio playback related functions. Uh, I'm not gonna go over each and every one of those. You can tell what they do by the name. There is a fairly uh, fairly unfortunate limitation in these, however, in that um, legend has it, and this is the uh, this is the story that I was told, and I haven't verified that it's true or not. But apparently, audio sync groups. Uh, the reason that they're such an obscure feature is that they were added to the engine basically for just a single game a long time ago for use in a single game that needed them. I don't know what that game would have been. Hey. And since then, they haven't really gotten a lot of attention. You can't do a lot of things with audio sync groups, such as you can't play them on emitters, which kind of takes a lot of the modern audio features that Game Maker lets you do with things like effects and audio buses and whatnot out of the, uh, the realm of possibility for these things. You should still be able to apply audio effects to the, uh, to the main bus and have them, um, have the music played through a sync group be, uh, be affected by audio effects on the main bus, but you can't really do any of the advanced fine-tuned control. At least as far as I know, I haven't found a way to do it myself. That definitely sounds like a feature request waiting to happen to, uh, to Game Maker to give audio sync groups some love because they are really cool and um, I can definitely think of a few people who would probably have a lot of fun making a game with an adaptive soundtrack, at least assuming you have the development resources and the, like, the time and energy bandwidth to work that closely with the composer. I might write a feature request to, uh, to bring sync groups up to code with um, the rest of the audio engine, and uh, put a link to that in the video description as well, which you can go and upvote and comment on and whatever. Anyway, that's it. Uh, these are really cool. Leave a comment if you knew these existed, or if you didn't know these existed, or if you have some fun ideas for things that you can do with these. If there is currently a way that you can make these work with audio emitters and whatnot, uh, let me know that too, because I'm not aware of any. This is probably the last audio video I'm going to make in Game Maker. There is, uh, Game Maker has talked about adding support for FMOD to uh, the engine at some point in the future, but that hasn't been mentioned in a while, and I assume it's a long ways off. I assume that's like a new runtime thing. FMOD, for those who don't know, is a uh, professional grade audio middleware, which lets you do all kinds of advanced audio effects in, uh, in games and stuff. Someone named mstop did make an unofficial extension for fmod for Game Maker a while ago. It should still work in modern versions. I haven't checked in a while. I know there's a 64-bit build for it, but I think I'm done talking about audio in Game Maker for now. So, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. As I mentioned before, I unfortunately cannot post a uh, GitHub repository containing this project in the video description because I do not have permission to distribute these files outside of an actual game. However, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game, currently a 3D uh, Zelda-like wizard game, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. And I would definitely appreciate it if you were inclined to pledge. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Sindra Larson, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.